So tonight we're talking about data storage and um, everything we've done up until this point in this class has been in, the data has been in memory data, which means that we enter something into the program and when the program ends, all of the data we've entered goes away, any calculations that happen goes away, they, they just evaporate into the ether. Um, that's not a great way to, uh, to deal with large bits of data. So what we have is we have the ability to read and write to the file system, to data storage. And everything on these systems are files, okay? Um, Keynote is a file. Every Python script we write is a file. The Microsoft Word is a file that is executed through Microsoft Word. So everything is a file. Um, and what we need to do in this module is to figure out how to read and write to files. Now we're only going to scratch the surface, but it is, um, it's, it's an area of, well, if you get into large files like databases, it is a whole area unto itself in the computer programming IT world. So we have a new keyword, and the new keyword is with. And with is a special type of loop that's just used on files. And it, it does a lot of the cleanup stuff for you. We're going to talk about a little bit of cleanup stuff that has to be done with files. If you use with and then do the reading in, the, in a with loop, then you won't have to do the cleanup. So we have some new functions. We have open, which tells Python to get a file descriptor. Not the contents of the file, but the descriptor of the file. And I'll talk about a little bit more about what that is. Close returns the file descriptor to the operating system. And read retrieves all the contents of a file. So, some new concept, a buffer. A buffer is just an intermediate place in memory. Writing to disk is the most expensive operation you can do on a computer. So rather than write every byte to disk every time we tell it to write, you know, a word, what the buffer does is the buffer kind of holds it in memory and then when the memory space starts to get full, it flushes it out to the disk. So it does a single write, and let's say it's 1024. That's how big the memory space is. It could be bigger, it could be smaller, but let's just assume it's 1024. So that 1024 gets filled up, it writes to the disk, and then it comes back and it waits for another 1024. So instead of doing thousands of writes, you do a single write, and then you wait and do another single write. So it basically saves processing. And the file descriptor, which I just mentioned, it's metadata. And metadata is the data about the file. So what is a file? I think I just said this. Everything's a file. This, what we're watching here is a file. And it is run by a program that is in itself a file. Um, every time you access a file, you interact with the operating system. So there are layers in computing, and you've got the operating, you've got hardware, you've got the operating system, which is the closest software to the hardware. Then you have programs that run on the operating system. And with things like Python, we're writing code that runs across operating systems but runs on a Python interpreter that is made for the operating system. So we have to be cognizant of the operating system when we're doing this. And there's just a couple of ways. If you're, if you're out writing large programs, there are things that you do have to really watch out for. In this class, not so much. So what can I do with a file? Well, you guessed it. You can create it, you can read it, you can update it, and you can delete it. Um, files and operating systems, this should have been the, 
previous slide, my apologies. Um, every operating system handles, thing, handles files differently. They just do. Mac and Linux are somewhat close, but not identical, and Windows is completely different. Um, so every operating system has a different file management, just a different file management system. And every action that you take on a, require, a file requires that you interact with the operating system. Python allows you to write portable code. It's called write once, run many, and, and Java does the same thing. There are lots of, of higher level languages that allow you to do that. And so this just means that you don't have to recompile and in some cases rewrite your code to run on Windows as opposed to Mac. I'm writing a utility right now for the product that I work on. Um, and I want to make that utility available through um, a specific channel so that lots of people can use it because they're, um, it'll be very helpful to our users. And I'm going back and forth with some of uh, the other programmers because I want to make it so that it is, um, it is right once run many and we're having a little bit of problems because there's some specific operating system stuff that we have to deal with. But, and, and what we see when, um, let's say you have, I have a Mac and I want to use Microsoft Office on a Mac, I have to buy Microsoft Office for a Mac. I can't just buy it for Windows because they have two different operating systems and they are that they have to be compiled for the operating system. Python does not. You can write your Python script once and run it anywhere, including with files. The, um, the file descriptors and things like that, there are modules that are out there that allow you to get the file based on, you know, an, an independently normalized path, and then Python takes care of whether it's in Windows or Linux. So files have properties. Name, size, and location on disk are some of those properties. This is called metadata, and it's contained in the file object provided by Python. Python. It's contained in the file descriptor. So here's my file and the stuff on the top without the blue background is my properties for the file. It's got the name of the file, it's got the size of the file, and it's got where it is. And the, if we want to visualize this, the contents that are in the blue, uh, so sorry, the text that is in the blue are the contents of the file. So you can think of this as two things and kind of a two-step process. So to open a file, we can create, read, and update, but no delete. Um, before we do anything, we have to open a file. And to do that, we use the open function. So the way this works is I have a variable. We know it's a variable. Left-hand side is a single equal sign. Right-hand side, there is a function called open. Now, last week, we did a lot of talking about dot notation. We are not using dot notation for files. The functions that we have are not dependent on the individual file. They're much more global functions. So we have open, and then the name of the file, it's a string, so you put it in quotes. And then we have the mode. Now, the mode of a file is um, how you're going to access that file. How are you going to do it? You're going to read it. You're going to write it. You're going to read it and write it. You're going to append to it. All of those have different meanings to the operating system. So read makes it read-only. You cannot change the file in any way, shape, or form. You can get the data out of it. You can do whatever you want with that data. You could write the data to another file, but you cannot write it to the same file. Write-only means you're never going to read it if the file already exists. A mode of W will open the file, 
erase everything in it and allow you to start rewriting. So be careful. Append means just start adding to the bottom. Whatever is there, just add to the bottom. Now you can combine the modes. And the, most, the mode that I use most is read, write, RW. So I can open it for reading and for writing. And if I do that, it will not um, erase the contents of the file. If it's RW, it does not erase the contents of the file. Now open provides us with a file descriptor. It does not provide us with the contents of the file. It gives us a way to get to the contents of the file. And the file descriptor provides all your file properties and it will say, okay, this is the, the file descriptor is how you're going to get to the contents. So the file descriptor is the way into the file. It's like a conduit, but it is not the contents. Now, and I'm going to say this until I sound like a broken record, you always have to close the file after you're done with it. A file descriptor is a finite system resource. Just like memory is a finite system resource, file descriptors are a finite system resource. If you don't close your file, you are not properly managing that system resource. And for this class, it doesn't matter so much. For um, when you get out into the real programming world, you got to manage your files properly because if you open too many file descriptors, you won't be able to open any more. There's only so many of them that you get on your operating system. So you have to close the file, sorry, you have to close the file descriptor to return it to the operating system. It releases it back to the operating system. And on operating systems like Windows, if somebody has a file descriptor, to a file, nobody else can open the file. In Linux, you can at least open it. But on Windows, you can't. It'll tell you the file's locked and you can't do anything. So make sure to remember to close your files or file descriptors. Sorry about the rule being. Um, rule, if it already exists in the location specified, Python will open it. If it does not exist in the location, then Python will create it when using W or R. So if it's not there and you're using W or R or both, it will simply create it. Um, and I'm just going to have this down here. Opening files uses a system resource. you got to close. So reading data, there's different ways of reading data from a file. Okay, We can read data from a file line by line, character by character, chunks at a time. You can also read it all at once. Now if we have a small file, reading all at once is completely fine. If you have very large files, you're not going to want to read them all at once. You're going to want to take some of the data in, process it, and then take some more in. So I have file open. I have my open. I'm opening my first file.txt for reading. So my file is now a file descriptor. I'm now saying my stir equals file.read. Why is it a stir? Because it's coming from a file. Python is, it's, it is going to be a string. And you're going to have to convert that string to whatever it is that you're going to want to do with it. If you know it's integers, you're going to have to convert it to an int. If you know it's characters, you're going to have to, sorry, if you know it's floats, you're going to have to convert it to a float. So the read function uses the dot notation. And that dot notation is, hey, Python, read the data from the file descriptor I'm giving you that is to the left of the dot. So that's what this does. And what Python will do is it will go out and it will say my stir is equal to, this is a text file, new line with two lines. So what that does is it just makes it a string. And now you can handle it like you would handle any other string in Python. So that's how easy it is to read a file. OK, and of course, you got to close the file. All right, read data from a file as a list. My file, it, um, 
Okay, my file is not the contents of the file. Read the contents of the file as a list with the new line separator. So I have the same my first file again. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to use a function called read lines. So last slide I used read. This slide I'm using something called read lines. And what this will do is it retrieves all of the contents as a list automatically using the new line as a separator. So you simply get a list that comes back from your file for every single line. So in this case, I'm going to have a list. And that list is, this is a file, that's the first element, with two lines, that's the second element. Well, no, notice they are still strings. They're just two different strings. Whereas in the last slide, read, you had a single string. And please close your file. Um, yeah, I keep saying that thing about the file descriptor, sorry. Retrieve the contents of the file line by line using a, a for loop. A line um, is ended when Python detects a new line. So there's my file. I've got my open statement. Now I say for line in my file. So this is a for loop. I've done this for loop before with in range, in list. Now I can do it with in file. So basically what this does is it says, for the in statement, if you give it if to the right-hand side of the in statement, there is a file descriptor. Python will know that you just want it to get each and every line individually for the for loop. So you're going to get a line. The first line it's going to print is this is a file. It's going to go back up to the top of loop. It's going to get another line. And it's going to say with two lines. So those are three separate ways to read a file differently. We can read everything and just have one big string. We can get a list back by using read lines. And we can use a for loop to get each and every line in the for loop. And this might be useful if you are reading through something and you have to process the line right away. You know, you don't want to necessarily read it in and then parse it out. So they're, um, they're just different strategies to solve different problems. And close your file descriptor. So closing a file descriptor. I think I said all this. The descriptor is a resource. You have to manage your descriptors. Open gets it. Close returns it. Um, Close also writes any changes you made to the file. Because op no operating system that I know of writes always to a file, you have to close it or flush it, and we'll talk about flush in a minute, to actually get the contents of the file onto disk. If you don't do that, there's a possibility that not all your data makes where you want it to make. Um, so that's it. Writes anything held in RAM to the disk, removes access in your script to the disk, and returns the file descriptor to the OS for reuse. Um, you have to always close it. Have I said that enough tonight? Let us do a few Python scripts with reading from a file. So read. So here's my, I'm going to just do one with read lines, and then I, what do I have in many lines.txt? So I have four lines, not that many lines. So here's my many lines.txt. If I do read this particular one, I'm going to do a read lines, and then I'm going to see what it gives me. So I'm go, I've got my, whoops, there we go. I've got my Python script, I've got my file equal open many lines.txt. Then I'm going to say lines equal file.readlines, and I'm going to print it, and then I'm going to close it. So let's just see what the debugger looks like when we're dealing with files. So first thing you're going to see up here is, if 
first of all, we pass the file open. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I only broke at line four. You will see this is a text I.O. wrapper with a name of myfile.txt. I've opened it with mode W, although I should have opened it with R. And the encoding is UTF-8. Then I get all this other stuff for my file. Here's our buffer. This is the place that it's going to buffer stuff to and from. This is closed as false. It tells me the encoding. And this, you might not be using UTF-8. You might be using some other type of encoding, especially if you're doing international programming. Errors are strict. Inline buffering false. Mode is right. Um, the name of the file, new lines, right through, and then there's even protected attributes. So this is the chunk size. That chunk size tells me how big my buffer is. It's 8192. So I have to write 8192 bytes into the chunk, into the buffer before anything flushes to the disk. So for just that open, that's all I got, or that's what I got. So now, oh, wait a minute. This is right. I'm sorry. We'll do that in a minute. Goodness, read. Let's do it. Let's just read each line. Let's read each line. Okay. I'm going to go back to read. Why isn't it there? With, add this. My apologies. Read. Uh, Read.py. Where are you? Here we go. Okay. So now I'm on read. I, I apologize for that. So I'm back here, and I am going to debug the read one and not the write one. So I have my files equal open many lines.txt. So I'm going to step over that, and you will see that it automatically gives me reading mode. If you do not put a mode there, it will only open it for reading. So my file is a file descriptor. I have all the stuff with it that I had when I opened it for writing. When I step over lines equals my file dot read lines, my lines, I ha now have four lines. And you'll notice here that the new line is associated with the elements that have new lines because it just reads them in as a string. So you're going to have to trim those off when you're reading your information in from your files in Zybooks. So I'm just going to print it to the console, and then I'm going to close it. So let's see what happens in the debugger when I close it. Okay, I'm going to step over. Sorry. Oh, sorry, it went. I thought it would show me more about the file descriptor, but it ended. I apologize. So that's how you read in the lines of code into a list. You might possibly have to do that for a lab this week. So read each line by line. This is a little different. It's the same file, many lines.txt, but I'm going to read it line by line. So now let's go through this and see what it shows us. So I'm in the debugger. I'm going to open. I now have my file descriptor right here, the text IO wrapper. And then I'm going to say, oh, shoot, I am not working this well tonight. All right. Read each line. Now we're going to do read each line. So I'm going to debug. So I've opened it. I've got my text IO wrapper. I've got line equal line one. So that is my first line. And I'm just going to print that out. And now I'm at line two. And now I'm at line three. And now I'm at line four. And you'll notice that it just automatically uses the slash n as the delimiter, but it leaves it in the string. So you're going to have to remember, potentially, to remove that. OK. So where are we? We're going to write to a file. So writing to a file is very similar to reading 
from a file. So if I want to write to a file, the first thing I have to do is I have to open the file, I have to get the file descriptor, and I have to tell it that I'm going to write the file. And then I'm going to write. There's a function called write, and I can write a string to the file, and I can do that as many times as I want. Now what you'll see here is that it goes to the intermediate buffer, and it's going to keep writing to this intermediate buffer until I close the file, at which point it makes sure the file descriptor is updated because it's got to tell me how many bytes it is and what its name is and where it's located, and then it copies the information from the buffer to the hard disk, and then it's done. So this is what it's like to write to a file. So if you're writing, ever writing very large files and things didn't make it into the file, make sure you close the file. Okay. Um, you can also use RW, which will allow you to read and write the file. So you can read it in, modify it, and write it back out. Uh, so right into a file before close. So we've got our buffer again. And this time I'm just going to create a big file. So for file write big file, my file dot write big file, and I'm going to write it a hundred times. And I'm going to do this a hundred times. And oh, this is for flushing. Sorry. How do I want to write to the file? Sorry, I just didn't get that when I was looking at the slide. This is about flushing. So you're going to call if I have a really big file and I don't want to wait for the buffer to fill up before I write, I can do something called flush. And flush does just what flush does. It basically clears the buffer and forces it to write to the file. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to write to the file, and then it's eventually going to close the file when it's all done. So this is only if you're writing huge files. You shouldn't need to use that in this class. But I like to make, it, make students aware that there is that functionality in most programming languages to write to, um, to force write to the disk. And there are a few cases when you would need that. So let's file with width. So let's look at writing to the file. And we'll do the write that I was going to do before. Right. So here I have a file. I have an em my, my empty file.txt, and I'm going to open it for writing now. This is actually empty, and I'm going to just write a few lines to it, and then I'm going to close it. So I'm going to run this through the debugger. I get a text I/O wrapper again. This time the mode is W, and now I'm going to write. Now if I look at empty file.txt, there's nothing in it. Go back to write. I step over. I've got an empty file.txt. There's still nothing in it. I go back to write. I step over. I step over. There's still nothing in empty file.txt. I now step over to close, and there's stuff in empty file.txt. So that is what close does, and that is also what flush does. And it just allows you to write to the file. Whoops, wrong thing. Okay, so that was that. This is with. With is your friend. If you have a file that you have to do some management on, it is always easier to use the with keyword and the loop that comes along with it. So here's what the syntax is. You have the keyword with, after that, you're going to say you're going to open your file. So it's with, then you have the call to open your file, and then you're going to say as my file. So my file is just the variable. It's the file descriptor. 
and so you're just giving it a variable name to put the file descriptor in. That's what's to the right of the as. And so what's going to happen is you're going to say line, my file dot read line, and I'm just going to print it. Or I could convert things here. I could change things from a you know a line into a dictionary maybe I've got stuff coming in with colons in it or some other delimiter and I want to change that stuff to a dictionary this would make that very very easy as you could do it line by line and when you're done you don't have to close it because when you oops when you exit that with loop the closing happens automatically and any flushing associated with it happens automatically. So I've been harping all the time, close, close, close. If you use a with loop, you do not have to close. So just remember that. And with will process the file until it reach, reaches the end of the file, but you, it's a loop, so you can still break and you can still continue and things like that. Um, okay. Working with the operating system. Python neutralize. I think I said all this. Um, OS handles file systems differently. Python, bleh, Python neutralizes that different for you. A Python script, when written correctly, can run on any operating system without having to make changes. Python modules. We haven't talked a lot about Python modules, but modules are the, are, are the lifeblood of Python. Mo there are modules out there for everything. And a lot of them come along with Python. Um, this week, we're going to be using a module called OS. And it allows us to interact with the operating system in a neutral manner. So I still don't have to know that it's Windows or Mac or Linux, but I can, inter I can interoperate with that operating system using the OS module. Oops. So, oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm just adding things to the slide deck. All right, let's do this right. Okay, let me just get rid of these. Shouldn't have hit the button that I hit. Okay, so we're modules. So here's a way to use the OS module. Right. Um, first of all, to there is a keyword called import, and I didn't go do a slide about that keyword. There's a keyword called import. Import says, hey, Python, out there on your path is a file called, in this case, os.py. I want you to bring in all of that Python script into my code. So even though I don't copy and paste it in, Python acts as if it is inside the Python script that you're creating and gives you access to everything associated with that. So there is a module called OS, and this is how you do, you neutralize the um, things like directory paths. So if I have a file path and I don't know what kind of operating system it's going to be on, I can say os.join home lshannon module 6 lecture.key. And if I'm on Linux, it will give me the correct path for Linux and the correct path for Windows. So this is just a small example and you're not really going to need this in this class, but I like to make sure that students understand that it's out there and available for when they move to their next, um, to whatever they're going to do next because you might need to know that. Binary data, and this is just to tell you that there are there is binary data. So right now, everything we've been doing in text is in text, but that's not what a lot of files are. I mean, if you go out there and you like opened up Microsoft Word in a text editor, it would look like gobbledygook because it is. 
It is not human readable. Um, and a lot of things, JPEG, GIFs, all, all kinds of imagery formats, all kinds of document formats are not human readable. They're readable when we open them up with the, um, the application that we're going to read them with. It, you, know, you can read a Microsoft Dirt Word document if you open it in Microsoft Word, but you can't read it if you open it in a text editor. So that's because it's binary data. And I just wanted everyone to be aware that there is something called binary data. Um, and there are whole, you know, uh, there are people who specialize in certain kinds of binary data formats. It's amazing. And just to let you know, if you ever want to write binary data, um, you just put a B in front of it. A lowercase b will tell Python that it's binary. Now it will still be human readable because we're not doing anything to make it non-human readable. But that B is all you need. So this is something you will need this week. A comma separated value file. So, and this is where a module comes in. So if you've ever seen a spreadsheet, you know, you've got rows and columns you can save a spreadsheet as a CSV file. So you'll have rows and each of the values will be separated by a comma. So for lab 7.8, you're going to have to read in a CSV file and we're going to use the CSV module to do that. And basically what that does is it allows us to read in the CSV file, get everything that we want and then process it like a multidimensional array. So here I have a CSV example here. And I'm going to create a list from the contents of word.csv removing duplicate words as you build the list. So this is from comma delimited.py and we'll go out and we'll actually actually let's just go out and look at the code for comma delimited.py. So comma delimited, oh colon delimited. Now I want comma separated. That's the one I want. So uh, comma separated. Here we go. So what this is, and this is kind of what you're going to want to think about doing for your um, lab, is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to import the reader from CSV. So CSV is the name of the module. From is a keyword. And it says, out of this module, get me something called reader. So, um, and we don't really do a lot of discussing import and from, but this is how you get a par portion of the CSV module. So this, this format, I could have done import CSV. This format allows me to get less code and just do what I want with it. Because I don't want to write the CSV, I only want to read it. So I have got words underscore list equal an empty list. Now I have, um, I am creating this outside the with loop because with is a loop. If I defined this inside the with loop, it would not be available in the, out, in the global scope of this program. So I want to define it outside the loop so that I can use it in the global scope. So the line five is with open words.cvs as words. So I'm going to open a file called words.csv, sorry, not cvs, csv, and I'm going to call the file descriptor words. So let's go out and look at words.csv. This is words.csv, and I got some, you know, um, extra stuff here, cat in, the hat hat in the hand, sorry, I'm drawing a blank blank, it is. That's just some words. And uh, where is it? Comma separated. 
So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to tell Python here is I want the content of the words file descriptor using the CSV reader. This reader is the same as that reader. And use the comma as a delimiter. So it will get me the content. And then I'm going to process the content. This is a multi-dimensional list. So you're going to process it just like a multi-dimensional list. I'm going to have two for loops. I'm going to have an outer loop for the row and an inner loop for the individual cells. And I'm going to run through that. And I'm going to determine if uh, my row of counter not in word list, then add it to the word list. So let's run through this. So I'm here on the open line. So let's see what happens when I step through the debugger. I now have a text IO wrapper for reading for the words for words.csv. So when I step over content, what that gives me is not a list. Okay? It gives me back a CSV reader object. And then I can go through the object. So I want to say for row and content. So if I do that, Python is smart enough to get me a list. So even though this content doesn't look like a multidimensional array, what it has done is it has gotten me the first line. That's what this line num is. And it's gotten it for me in the form of a list. So now I'm going to uh, I'm going to process cat in the hat hat in the hand and I'm going to say okay if row of counter is not in word list then I'm going to append so word list now has cat and now I'm going to do it again and it now has in it's going to have the going to have hat and it didn't add something that time because it was already in the word list. So I am now going to check the next word. Uh, in cat in the hat hand and that's what should come in. And then I'm done. And now I'm going to go back up for row in content. It's going to get me the second row. So you'll see down here that line num is two. And it got it for me as a list. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm now going to run through this row because it's just a it's just a row. It's just a list right now. Until I figure out that I've got all of the words that are unique in my list and I'm going to go to the console and I'm going to print it out. So that is how you use a CSV reader. You're going to have to use it for Lab 7.8. Don't start from scratch. Come out to the web page, download this file, and use it as your beginning. And I know some teachers will cringe at me saying that, but I almost never start from scratch. I either have code that I've already written, or code that a colleague's written, or I go out and look for code that is, you know, or examples of code. I don't, I don't start with a blank screen very often, and neither should you. So I hope other teachers don't cringe, but here's a starting point for what you have to do in 7.8. We've given you a lot of work this week, a whole lot of work this week. And um, so what I would like to see you do is I would like to see you have to do less work. Okay, you've got your project due. So um, don't, I, I want you to have to worry less about some things. This is seven, the labs in seven are crazy. They're big crazy. Um, and by the way, if you are trying to figure out whether you should do your labs or finish your project, finish your project. Do your project first. It's more credit. It's 
the numbers are higher for that. Then come back and do your labs because you have two weeks, even though they'll take some points off, you have two weeks or you have this week and next week to get your labs in. So get your project in if you're, if you're wondering. Okay, so that was the keyword width and our CSV example. You're going to need this for 7.9. This is list to a dictionary. So I have the contents of a file called dict.txt and it contains key value pairs. Unfortunately, they're stored on a different line as the value. For example, the key is the first line in the file and the value is the second. So create a dictionary from the file and print it out in the format key colon value. So let's see, do I have this as a script? Uh, is that it? Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. To dict. Ah, here it is. So let's just do this one. Um, and I don't actually open the file on this one. Um, you've seen me open a file three times now. It's the same thing. So what I'm here, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to show you how to make it from a flat list into a dictionary because you're going to need this for 7.9. So do I have a... Yep, I do. Okay. So um, let's debug this. So I have contents, which is just the comma separated list, or sorry, a list, comma separated values. And I have created a dictionary, my dict, in the global space. So I have a place to store it so I can then go out and use it later. So I'm going to say for counter in range len contents and then for the contents I'm going to say if counter plus one less than length of contents and counter modula two is zero then if counter if contents of counter is not in my dict then add it. So what am I doing here? I'm at zero so the first thing I'm going to do is say is counter plus one less than the length of contents. This makes sure that I don't step over that array. This is an array. This is a list. It's got a finite. I don't want to step over the finite. So I want to make sure that because I'm, I am, what I'm doing here is I'm using two things from the counter. And I want to make sure that counter modula two is zero, which means I'm only on an even element. So right now I'm at zero, so I'm on an even element, and I'm at zero, so I'm not at the length of contents. So I'm going to step over. Um, their contents are not in my dict, so I'm going to add them. So now I have name colon Lisa. That's, that's the way you do this. And then you're going to do this again. And I was on number one, which is one modulo two is not zero. So now I'm at two, so I'm going to add it. Answer 42. I'm at three. Three modulo two is not zero. I'm at four. So here I am, and I'm going to add uh, amount 3.14. So now I go down, 5 plus 1 is 6, so it's not less than the length of the contents, and I'm done. Now I have this beautiful little dictionary, and I can do a loop through the dictionary. So in this case, the loop I am doing is for key in my dict. So I'm getting the key from the dictionary, and I'm going to print the key and the value out. So that's all I'm going to do here. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to print it with a format, key, comma, my dict of key, and I'm going to get the three values. So this is how you go from a flat list to a dictionary, and you're going to have to do that for 7.9, and it's one of those things that can be maddeningly frustrating. So let's finish this up. We'll talk about the labs. 
and then I'll stop the recording and we'll open it up and talk about projects. So word frequencies. So you're going to read in the name of an input file, then read the file using CSV reader. Um, so it contains words separated by commas. Your program should output the words and their frequencies. So there's a number of times each word appears in the file without any duplicates. So basically what you have to do is just what we did for the CSV reader in that lab. We're going to open it using the CSV reader. Now, mind you, I have while there are more lines to be read in the file. Remember, pseudocode is language agnostic. If you go back and look at the example that I did for that other file for CSV reading, you will see how to do that in Python. So set user file equal to the result of the CSV reader for the CSV file with a comma delimiter. Now I'm going to go processing it for rows and columns because that's how we do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if value of row at index is not in the word list, then I'm going to output the value of row at index and the, and the value at row of count index, and then I'm going to append it. So that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. 7.9. Sort TV. This is a long, long lab. So basically, you're going to have to do a couple reads and writes. You're going to read in the name of an input file. Then you're going to read the contents using read lines. Then you're going to input the file contents. Sorry, the, the file contains an unsorted list of number of seasons followed by the corresponding TV show. Your program should put the contents of the input file into a dictionary where the number of seasons are the keys and the list of TV shows are the values. So you're going to have the number as the key and the TV show as the value. So you're going to do it just like we saw in that last example. Um, and um, Sorry, a list of TV shows, since the number of shows could have the same number of seasons. So you're going to have a number as key, and you're going to have a list to the right. So it's to the right of that colon is going to be a list, whether it is a single um, TV show or multiple, you're still going to have a list. And then you're going to sort the dictionary by key, least to greatest, and output the results to a file name, outputkeys.txt separating multiple TV shows associated with the same key um, with a semicolon. Then you're going to sort the dictionary by values, alphabetical order, and output the results to a file name output titles.txt. So this is what we did. The first paragraph is close to what we did in that last example I just showed you. This is about using the dictionary to process the data in a certain way and then output it. So, um, and we've done similar things. And that's, so that's what you have to do. So this is part one here, and there's three slides to this. First of all, you have to define a couple of global variables. Um, oh, sorry. The very first thing you have to do is allow for input for the file name, because that's how Zybooks is going to give it to you. And it's going to give you different files when you go to actually run this. So you're going to have, it's going to have multiple files, and you're going to have to go through and try. It's going to have to, it's going to test this with different files. Um, you're going to set the user file after you open the file. You're going to have um, output list to the lines in the user's file, and then you're going to create a dictionary in the global dic in the global space, an empty list for show list in the global space, and an empty list for show list split in the global space. Um, so this is just some comments on how to do this processing. But basically, we are for index in length output list. We're going to create a temporary list. We've got to have some place to put it um, temporarily. Then you're basically going to take the list object 
and we're going to set it equal to the output list of index where new line has been removed. So you got to make sure you remember to remove the new line if it's there. And here's that index one plus one less than the length of the output list and index modulo two. That's what we just did. So then I'm going to convert the list object to an integer. Okay. Because remember, it is an integer, and we're going to have to sort by that integer. And then I'm going to remove the new line from it. I'm going to append the output list at index 1 to my dict at list object. So that's what we just saw in the previous example. Otherwise, we're going to remove the new line from the output, and then we're going to output at index plus one to temp list and then set my dict at list to object to temp list. Whoops, I keep hitting that wrong key. All right, we won't worry about that right now. So the, now we've got everything into the appropriate dictionary with the number as the key and a list of titles as the um, as the values. So now what I have to do is I have to sort it. So I'm going to set sorted my dict to sorted my dict. This will tell you how to sort lists. And then set my dict sorted on, by keys to new dict populated by with sorted my dict. Okay. Um, so there are several approaches to um, create this third dictionary, and I give you a place to look in Zybooks. OK, so we're now we're going to change the dictionary to a list. So for x in keys of my dict dot keys, append my dict dot x dot show list. So, um, so that's when we're going to take the shows. And then we're going to split the list of lists into a single list. And then we're going to comment, sorry, then we're going to show sort, show list, split. So that should give us the titles. And now we're going to set the file to output keys.txt open for writing. And then I'm going to go through the my dict sorted by keys. I'm going to convert the key to a string. I'm going to write key plus colon to F. I'm going to say for item in value wherever, you know, from, from the beginning to the end, write item plus semicolon to F. So that is so if there are multiple titles, you are doing a for loop over the title list and you're separating them by semicolons. And then I'm going to write value minus 1 to F, and I'm going to write a new line to F. And when all of that is done, I'm going to close it. And then I get to write it out again. So for file twos, output titles.txt for item in show list split, I'm going to write item plus new line to the file, and then I'm going to close the file. That's a lot of work, a whole lot of work. So again, if you're struggling, if you're, especially if you're in my class, if you're struggling with 7.9, leave it. Come back to it later. Get your project done. So does anybody have any questions associated with what we've talked about tonight? Because if not, I'm going to stop the recording, and then we can go through any questions and, and the code that you guys wanted to look at for the project. Going once, going twice, I'm going to stop the recording.